This video follows up on the projectile motion basics that we learned in the last video. So actually to be able to follow this video it would be really good to review the last video, particularly the formulas that were discussed at the very end. What we're going to do here is apply the formulas that were learned in the last video to sample problems of two types. One is problems where the projectile is launched horizontally and the second type is where projectiles are launched at an angle. Here's an example of a problem where the projectile, in this case a stone, is launched horizontally. So this problem is the stone is thrown horizontally at 15 meters per second from the top of a cliff 44 meters high and we're asked two questions. How long does it take the stone to reach the bottom of the cliff and how far from the base of the cliff does the stone hit the ground? Well, if you remember from the last video, the way you have to approach problems like this is to realize that the object is moving in two directions at once. It's moving horizontally and vertically, and we had to write a formula for each dimension. But first, let's consider what implications it has that the object is launched horizontally. First of all, we learned when it comes to the initial velocity, you would write the initial velocity as a vector and normally it would make some angle with the ground. So then we learn that you had ways to calculate V initial X and V initial Y given V initial. So V initial X would be here and V initial Y would be here. And we would use trigonometry to get V initial X and V initial Y and plug them in the formula. But if the object is launched horizontally, it's as if this angle is zero. V initial, if it's launched horizontally, V initial is completely horizontal like this. And this means that theta is zero. So it's as if we, instead of drawing the V initial like that, we shoot it like this so that the angle is actually zero. And the implications for V initial X and V initial Y are V initial X is just V initial because V initial X, V initial is all in the X direction. There is no vertical part to this. And so that also means that V initial Y is zero. So when we use the formulas to calculate projectile motion for an object launched horizontally, V initial X is just whatever V initial is. And V initial Y is zero. So coming back to our problem here, with a stone thrown horizontally 15 meters per second from the top of a cliff 44 meters high. We have to figure out how long it takes the stone to hit the bottom of the cliff. So we start off with our horizontal formula. X equals V initial X component, horizontal component of initial velocity times time plus one half times the X component of the acceleration times time squared. And we had noticed before that when an object is traveling through the air, there is no acceleration horizontally. The object moves at a constant velocity horizontally, so that term is zero. And we also just learned that if you throw it horizontally, V initial X is actually just whatever V initial is. So our whole formula just simply boils down to this. The horizontal distance traveled is equal to the initial velocity times the time it's in the air. In this problem, that's how far it goes. That's the speed I launch it, which is 15 meters per second, and that's how long it's in the air. Question A is how long is it in the air? So that's it right there. That's 15, but I don't know how far it goes. So I need to write the vertical formula as well to solve the problem. So I also have to write the vertical formula which is vertical height or vertical distance equals initial velocity in the y direction times time plus one half times the acceleration in the y direction times time squared. Well if I launch something horizontally then v initial y is zero. Also when I'm moving vertically the acceleration in the y direction 
is just the acceleration due to gravity. So the acceleration in the y direction is actually the acceleration due to gravity. So what's going to happen is this term is 0, and this term right here is going to be g, so I end up with y equals 1 half g times time squared. Now in this formula, y stands for how high, or the vertical distance, that the object travels. g is the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, and t is how long it's in the air. The distance that the rock travels, the stone travels, is the height of the cliff. So it falls 44 meters, so I know that. That's a known number. This is 9.8. That's a known number. And this is how long it's in the air. That's what they're asking me for, how long it's in the air. So all I have to do is solve for t. So what I'm going to do is to, first of all, multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the 1 half. 2y equals gt squared. Then I divide both sides by g to get t squared by itself. And then I take the square root of both sides to get t. So all I have to do to figure out how long it's in the air is put the numbers in. So t equals the square root of 2 times 44 meters divided by 9.8 meters per second squared. And when I solve for that, I get 3 seconds. So that's the answer to part A. So we've answered part A. How long does it take the stone to reach the bottom of the cliff? It takes 3 seconds. And now we need to answer how far from the base of the cliff does the stone hit the ground? So I've got to ask myself, in all these formulas, what letter is how far from the base of the cliff? What exactly is that? How far from the base of the cliff is a horizontal distance. And horizontal distance we are representing with an x. And so we had already built the formula x, when you launch horizontally, is just equal to the initial velocity times time since the initial velocity is all in the x direction. So now I need this, and I just figured out that's 3 seconds, and the initial velocity, they told me, was 15 meters per second. So I'm ready to just plug this directly in. So x is going to equal 15 meters per second, and it's going to be in the air for 3 seconds. So all together, it's going to go... 45 meters. So it lands 45 meters from the base of the cliff. All right, now it's your turn. So try this problem and then show it to me when you get back to class. A car traveling at 20 meters per second rolls off the edge of a cliff. The cliff is 44.1 meters above the ocean. How far from the base of the cliff does the car hit the water?